I'm Phil Coombs, a picture editor for the BBC News website and look after, well, obviously the photographs that appear on the, uh, the site. Uh, BBC is a British Broadcasting Corporation um, and its news uh, arm is one of the largest, if not the largest, in the world, certainly outside of the United States. Um, we're currently in the new broadcasting house, which is the BBC News' new home, uh, central London, just off Oxford Street. Um, it's a purpose-built new building that brings together BBC News in terms of television, online and radio and BBC World Service. Currently we're seated in a, in a small booth just off the second floor. You may hear some strange things in the background, some of my colleagues or, and people have no idea who they are, but they're all making radio programmes or a bit of television is being recorded um, just around the corner from us um, and online is, is a few floors up from here and a few floors down is the main newsroom which if you ever get to watch the BBC is what you'll see in shot uh, behind the, the news readers from time to time. So a, a normal day um, here for me as a, as a picture editor uh, will involve a variety of tasks from picture research and for various parts of the site, website. Journalists will require images for their particular story, maybe breaking news images or may well be archive pictures to illustrate a feature. Alternatively, um, I'll be working on other actual stories of my own, so there'll be such things from the day in pictures and the week in pictures, which is a collection of some of the best news photographs from around the world, or I might be doing a feature on a, one particular photographer or interviewing a photographer uh, for a piece about their, their latest project. So yeah, so I've always been interested in photography. I don't know if I could claim to always having wanted to be a picture editor. I probably didn't know one existed when I was at, when I was at school. Um, photographer, probably wanted to do a bit of that. Um, I also was quite into sort of filmmaking. We made cine films at, at, at when I was at school. Um, so maybe a cameraman perhaps. But anyway, it was always some sort of visual thing. Um, I'm not sure that I ever really um, kind of thought of any, any other angle that I would, I would want to work in really. No, absolutely. I think like most people, you, you, you kind of have an idea of an area you want to work in, but quite often you just drift into, or drift maybe the wrong word, but you, you kind of sort of things move from one step to another and, and it's quite hard to see an end goal at, at certain times. Oh, it's, 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 it's tough. There's a lot of people taking pictures um, these days, but there's nothing wrong with that. So there's no reason your pictures are just as important as anybody else's. So um, and keep taking them and, and try and find your own sort of voice and, and, and vision through them, really. My advice would be to sort of soak up everything that's out there and see what, and you know, take lots of photographs if you're into the actual photography side of it, which is a, which is a good thing. Regarding, you know, um, take lots of pictures, um, share those pictures, um, I'd always advise people to kind of be quite critical of their own pictures, not in a, not in a negative way, but just purely in a in a kind of thinking about what the work your pictures are taking. Try and build up sets of work that tell a story, or you know, always have your 20 best pictures set aside somewhere, rather than the 5,000 that you took last week on the web. You know, edit yourself down to 20 of your best pictures that if somebody said, you know, show me them now, you could just pull them out straight away. That's quite a nice thing, and it's really rewarding for you as well because it. It makes you realise actually, you know, you've got a good body of work um, that, that, that rather than one here and one there, pull them together. You know, um, uh, and also, if you're into photography again, you know, tr try and do a little story or, or something or something local. Find something that you can tell a tell a tell a tale on or a, an item or an object or I don't know, it can be almost anything to be honest. Um, but just get something to focus your own ideas. So it can be quite daunting to know what to photograph. Um, so it's good to set yourself a task or a theme in which to follow and Phonar does that and sets you a task, something to hone your sort of, your sort of lens on really. Here at BBC we do a similar thing with your pictures each week. Um, we set a theme for our readers from sort of mountains, colour, shapes or anything really that's, that's nice and accessible that people around the world can get out, photograph and send it in a picture. Um, and we get some fantastic images and, and, and it gives you a chance to really kind of focus your ideas um, and just rather than just wandering and taking pictures that, that catch your eye. So you know it's also important to remember that, that you know organisations are up for, for running or certainly this organisation is up for running a um, series of pictures from, from people around the world who, who may have you know seen something that they think it's, it's good to share um, and so when submitting pictures it's, it's worth you know packaging them up to sort of a dozen pictures or maybe two dozen pictures um, rather than sending a link to a website that's got 150 images no one's just going to have the time to go through that you know really tightly edited it and remember one of the most important things is also the text that you send with it we have to have an explanation we don't know anything about what you're sending us you have to tell us you know what it is where it is who it is get quotes from the people you're photographing bring the pictures to life 
you know, we get sent, I get sent loads and loads of submissions of, you know, I've been to Town X or re Remote Place Y. Here are some great pictures. Yeah, they're great pictures, but you know, if I've only got one line of text to go with it, I just can't run it. Sure, I could do the research, but you know, you've been there. Do the research, send me the information and the quotes, and it just comes to life, and you've got much, much more chance of, of somebody picking up a piece like that. We had a couple of dark rooms at school. One was in the science lab, and one was in the arts lab, which was kind of weird. And you had this sort of conflict between the way things were taught. But, but you know, I I made as much use as I could of them. Probably not as much as I should. But um, you know, nowadays, it's, as I say, it's all mobile phone and, and quick and sharing and so on, which is which is a is a good thing. The fact that you can take pictures in, you know, straight away and you can see them straight away. But on the other hand, there's that you know here and gone kind of thing. And, and the, the trick is trying to make people want to see your pictures more and again and again so you know if you've got a picture that you're proud of you know print it out it doesn't have to be the best print in the world but just print it out stick it on your wall you know if you're still happy looking at it two weeks later then it's possibly a good picture um you know if on the other hand you're fed up with it and you're tearing it off the wall after a day then let it get let it go you know let it go and that's that's you know, go to move on to the next one so i left school and, and and went straight to work at the bbc i've been here for kind of forever really um, and worked as a, as a clerk in the, in the stills library, um, filing pictures. Um, and, you know, that, that was how I kind of got into it. And so I then, I did go to, to, to do, I did do a degree, degree in photography, um, but I did it as a part-time degree while working here. Um, but, you know, you don't need to, um, you, you know, you pick up a camera or pick up a, 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 a you know, a, a, some sort of device that takes pictures, really. Um, you kind of need one of those somewhere on the line. Um, uh, but otherwise, you know, it's, it's about what the image says. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be technically perfect. You know, there's some great pictures out there that that are that are out of focus, to be honest. And you know, focus is overrated, as they say. Um, it's it's about what you're trying to say with the pictures is the most important thing. At least for me, it's the most important thing. Um, you know, I, everything in the world has probably already been photographed. Every sort of wow moment has probably been done, or if it hasn't, they only last for two seconds anyway. The best pictures are the much quieter images that speak to you from a longer t you know longer term. Um, or there are a series of pictures that have something to say, or there's something that has a, some sort of social relevance. Um, for me, at least, uh, you know, I, I, I'm the, the, the instant wow thing is is, is, is just you know, it's too short a life to worry about. Really, I think I think you need to concentrate on on, on, on longer term stuff, and you can do that with any kind of recording device, really. Um, and uh, an approach approach stories differently. You know, if you if you're going to yeah, if you're approaching something that's um, you know, and you're kitted out with all. You know, if you stand, if you're standing in a, in a line, there's loads of special photographers standing next to you, then you're probably in the wrong place. You know, let them get those pictures, move away, go and find your own own way of approaching a story. Well, so yeah, so so there's always that you know uh, that, that myth that you have to go millions of miles to take a you know a decent picture or, or tell a story. You, you don't. You probably, to be honest with you, you probably don't even have to leave your own house. You can tell a story within within the, your own, your own walls if you. If, if you if you look hard enough, um, you know what's normal to you is is not necessarily to everybody else, and, and, and it is of interest. You know, or go out into your local street and find something. Um, I don't know, um, off the top of my head. You know, I don't know. Go and find a local post box or something, and and photograph the next 20 people that turn up at that post box. Ask them to take their. Can I take your picture? Take a photograph of them. A nice portrait, not standing next to the box, but just a nice portrait of them. Do it on your phone. Take a record of their name. Where they send in the letter? What's the letter? What you know? What is the letter of? So you know, you end up with a, you know, John, I don't know, electricity bill, Bristol or something, and then the next one maybe, you know, somebody, I don't know, Mrs. Mrs. Jones or something, sending a letter to a sister in Australia. You'd have a lovely set of pictures. It's got a social document, you know, and in 30 years' time, when the, the last post box is sealed up and no one uses them anymore, you've got, a, you know, you've got a historical story there. You can, you can, you can sell it in 30 years' time if not now. The first photographer I ever became aware of is the same one everyone of my generation became aware of, which is obviously Don McCullin, um, who's working in the Sunday Times, but you know, still a big admirer. Um, but once looking around, probably um, if I had to pick one, I'd go for Tony Ray Jones, somebody perhaps um, many have not heard of, but he did some fantastic work, um, mm -hmm. just, just sort of mind blowing what we call street photography, I suppose, these days. Um, juxtaposition, juxtapositions of, of people and things. Um, that, that looks effortless but actually is, is, is incredibly hard work and very funny as well. Uh, more recently then, then there's, there's just so much good stuff out there these days. Um, I, I kind of like the idea of sort of photographic collectives and, and there's one in Scotland called Document Scotland, a sort of four photographers who got together um, and brought some fantastic work, um, one of whom Sophie Gerrard um, has done some lovely stuff on, on sort of the dunes up in Scotland 
um, and the development of a golf course up there, or the protest against the development of a golf course by, by Donald Trump um, up, up in the, on the coast in Scotland. Um, really nice work, quiet pictures, but but once you get the, the context and the background behind them, they just they just really come to life. So another photographer that caught my eye, another one in Scotland, is Sarah Amy Fishlop, who has done a fantastic project on um, people being resettled in, in Glasgow. So the Iraqis who are working um, for the British government and forces in Iraq during the conflict um, and then resettled in, in Glasgow. Um, so the subject's identity had been hidden um, within these pictures. But nonetheless, although you can't see the faces, they're just really powerful pictures, very, very quiet pictures, muted tones, um, but nonetheless, they just, they just draw you into the subject and you really, really want to know more about the people and about the project. And, and it's, it just shows a way that, that, although initially you'd think, you know, I'm going to photograph something that can't show their face, can't show this, can't show that. But actually there are ways to do it and, and you just need to take your time and get in there, talk to people and open doors. Uh, so best of luck to everybody uh, with Phone Our Nation. I'm going to keep an eye on the project and seeing how it goes. And I'm hoping to meet one of you at the end of the course.